This is Maryland Comptroller Peter Francho, and you are listening to the Maryland Crabs. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs Podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. Happy Thursday from the Maryland Crabs. Just one crab today. John is on assignment. Actually, he is kind of on assignment. He is covering the commissioning week events. It's Thursday today, which means that the color parade was about an hour ago. And that was the final parade of the school year. And the whole brigade was out there in dress whites on Warden Field. And then tomorrow, the graduation is at 10 a.m. So if you have to get out of town, get out of town quick because Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, is going to be there to speak. He couldn't do it last year. VP had to jump in last minute. And the Blue Angels are going to do a flyover. Now, if you're interested in watching it live, then go to Ian Annapolis and he'll have a link there to the live feed. So he, John's covering everything. That's why he's been so busy this week. And that's why I've been left to my lonesome for this week's episode. Whereas John's done the heavy lifting on a lot of the ones in the last few weeks. And he's actually Actually on his own for next week's episode next Thursday, which will be former county executive John Leopold. He's going to sit down with John and we're going to have a celebration of the Johns. And they're going to talk about uh, what his plans are in the upcoming election and what he would have done differently. And John's going to pin him down for a few questions that are going to have him storming out halfway through. That's actually not happening, and that's the whole reason I was not allowed to be there. In fact, my schedule allowed me to be there, but I was deliberately excluded, which in retrospect was actually the good move. In the meantime, speaking of John, I want to give him some credit where a lot of you guys don't know the amount of work he puts on to his Ian Annapolis Daily Briefing. If you've not done so yet, go to your Alexa app and go in there to the skills and search for Ion Annapolis and activate that skill on your Alexa so that every morning you just say, Alexa, play the Ion Annapolis Daily Briefing. And you get about a 10-minute daily briefing John puts together every day. He gets up at the crack of Jesus to do it. And it is uh, the latest news. He's got weather. He's got uh, some commentary. He does a great job with it. And like I said, I hate giving him credit, but go in and subscribe to it. And as always, go rate it and give him reviews. Actually, it is part of my daily routine, and I hate to admit it, but it is. Speaking of ratings and reviews, have you subscribed to our podcast yet? Not just gone to our website, or what you can do at themarylandcrafts.com, but if you've actually gone to Apple Podcasts or Google Play and subscribe, do it, because whenever a new episode comes out, it's downloaded automatically to your device. You don't have to worry about anything, and it's fantastic, and you'll never miss us, and you'll hear our dulcet tones at any given part of the day, and it is fantastic. This week, we're continuing to celebrate Maryland Podcast Month that was put together by our righty-tighty friends up at Red Maryland. Uh, Go subscribe to their podcast as well. Rate it, review. They do a great job. Uh, That's when we're doing our crossover where we're actually reaching out to all the other podcasts in Maryland. We're doing crossover episodes. We're having each other on. We're trying to get everyone to discover what Maryland podcasts are out there. And we got some great podcasts. Uh, We got uh, Maryland Crabs, which is absolutely superb. It's probably the best, according to my mom. Uh, But we also have Red Maryland, of course. You want to go subscribe. They do a great job. And we have More Power to You, who we'll be talking to later this week for a Crab Cake episode. We have the Annapolis podcast by the podfather of Annapolis podcast, Scott McMullen. And then we have our current guest who we're going to be talking to today. And by we, I mean me. I'm all on my own. And it was a drinking podcast. And it was a drinking podcast without John there to shush me and to get us back on topic, which actually, in retrospect, we probably could have used because we were off topic most of the time. But it is the Annapolis Pintcast with Liz Murphy. Liz is a friend of our podcast. She's absolutely delightful. We had a great time. I had to Uber home. That's the mark of a good night. But she was a good sport. And I can't wait to do it with her again without John to make us behave. So coming up after the break, we have Liz Murphy with Annapolis Pinecast. When a ring from the United States Naval Academy comes into Zachary's for a center stone, it always makes us wonder, where's this one going? Where's this one been? A nuclear sub in the North Atlantic? A carrier deck in the South Pacific? The moon? 52 astronauts are Academy graduates. From Iwo Jima to Okinawa, Corregidor to the Coral Sea, Midway to the Persian Gulf, Congress to the White House. 
These rings go where America goes. 73 that went to war were awarded the Medal of Honor. But wherever they go, wherever they may serve, our admiration goes with them. Zachary's. Online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. More than a jewelry store, a jeweler. Spring is waiting outside your door, and it's time to make your lawn and garden beautiful again with Homestead Gardens. Their experts will show you how to make a safe lawn for kids and pets using the area's largest selection of organic lawn solutions. Share family fun and satisfaction growing food, flowers, and shrubs together. Visit Homestead Gardens in Davidsonville or Severna Park, Maryland, and go to homesteadgardens.com for deals, events, and workshops. Live life outdoors this season with Homestead Gardens. Gardens. Few people can get me out of my house, but Liz Murphy's one of them. Liz Murphy of the Annapolis Pinecast. Na- Naptown Pinecast. Naptown Pinecast. Look, we're off to a roaring start. Wow, Tim. Well, I got your name right. Are you sure, though? Liz? Lizbeth. I don't know. My mom's Betsy. Really? Uh huh. I don't know. I want to say you look like a, t- a Tom. Tom? And thanks for coming. Uh, we are at the 1747 pub. Yes, so Reynolds Tavern is upstairs. Yeah, so we're down in kind of like a Middle Ages sort of Game of Thronesy tavern sort of place. It's, it's all, if you've never been down here, actually, I never go out, but the 1747, which was right off Church Circle, so it's yeah. Brown Fox Tavern, and it's, it's down underground, and there's like this huge arching fireplace where they have a fire roaring in the winter, and mm-hmm. it's, it's really tucked away. The tourists don't come here. This is an awesome place, so I, I, I never it. go out. But this is the place I come to. Well, and what's really cool about it, too, is that this is one of the first places I started actually drinking when I lived in Annapolis, when I moved to Annapolis. Um, my husband's from Annapolis. I, I am not. I'm from Washington, D.C. You're from D.C.? Yeah, I'm from D.C. I was born in D.C. I lived there when I was a kid. Oh, so the secret shame in my family is I'm the only person not born in D.C. Uh, my parents decided they were going to explore California for a job. I was born there, and a year later, they moved back. Oh, that's the worst. I know. It's kind of terrible. Where did you live in D.C.? Uh, I lived right near American University off New, Me- New Mexico or Nebraska Avenue. And then Patrick and I lived There's a Sutton Place over. Gourmet there. When, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sutton Place Gourmet can get it. That was my first job. It was the one in Bethesda. I, was, no I, worked, I worked at Jeffrey's Ice Cream, which was part of that. And that was Jeffrey Cohen. He owned it. Huh. Yeah. So we're connected. I feel like I see the more you know star going right over yeah, your head. That's the second time this came up today. I was in an award ceremony earlier today, and they got their little statues and their little stars with trails. And I said, that looks like the more you know. And everyone just stared at me. And then one guy started roaring. So he's my new best friend, Kevin. Man, I feel like every time I run into you, you've always been somewhere way cooler than where I was <laughs> earlier. Because you're like, I was at an award ceremony earlier. And I'm like, I was at in Panera. In Spain. Panera in Festival at Riva. Spain. I, <laughs> That's what's <Spain. laughs> So we came into the pub. We were upstairs. It's about, it's a Friday evening, 730. And so it was like that scene out of Goodfellas when he's on the date with Karen. And they're not, they're going through the basement and through the, mm-hmm. the kitchen and people are high-fiving him and everything. So I was going through the front door and Liz just kind of grabs me and we go through like the back stairs and down through the, she's glad handing the owner and sat down and they give her the uh, menu of the draft. She's like, oh, I know it. I know it by heart. I do. So I'm a Miller Lite guy, as everyone knows. Yes. I am cla- Miller Lite or Guinness. Mm-hmm. Although, like Stella. My wife drinks Stella, so we, we have Stella in the fridge. And That's in a pinch, fine. I'll do it. But I don't like craft beer. It's not that I don't like them. It's just I don't like them. But you said you like that beer. All right. So what am I drinking here? Well, do you like it? All right. Hold on a second. Because if you say you don't, then you lied to me earlier. Right, hold on. So it is It's bitter, but not unpleasantly so. Mm-hmm. It's got a lot of carbonation. Kind of like chocolate undertones, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it'll warm up. It's going to taste a lot nicer. So uh-huh. this is a uh, bourbon barrel aged imperial chocolate stout from Heavy Seas. So I got the chocolate. Look at that. Look at you. Got Look it. at you finding those flavor profiles. Yeah, I know. It tastes a little bit woody, earthy, maybe. That uh, it's barrel aged, so absolutely. I'm just making that up. I don't know. But it also does have wooden undertones. I always <laughs> I always do that when I uh, because I don't know wine either, so I'll swirl the wine and I'll say, I, it's the bouquet reminds me it's a little woody, and everyone's like, yes, yes. Absolutely. Or buttery. When you always say buttery. And pe- unless it's, it, but if it's a red, I don't. But if it's a, it's a white. White, you can say buttery. I'll, if it's a red, you don't say buttery. I kind of squint a little bit and go, a little buttery. And they go, good observation. I said, yes. So what kind is this? I don't know why. So, yeah. This is a stout. It's from Heavy Seas. I love stouts. So there you go. I like Guinness. And there's one that is a stout, but it's like a, it's, it's a little more carbonated than a Guinness. Hmm. No? Do you know who makes it? Kevin. 
<laughs> Kevin? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. What's I'm, funny is I'm like, wait, which Kevin? Because there's like Kevin, who's the head brewer at Union, yeah. um, and he. Well, Murphy's are like Murphy's Irish. Style. Hey, you, so you're a Murphy, so I've done my family. I'm, I'm a Murphy under duress in my marriage. Let's be very clear here. Oh, I thought that was your maiden name. No. What, what's your maiden? My name? maiden name is Moorhead. High school was terrible. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's beautiful. It's like wonderful. Agnes Moorhead from Bewitched. Yes, that would be correct. Yeah. See, I recovered from that. But Murphy, so I go, you know, Patrick Murphy. Yeah, he's a total mech, right? Yeah, he is. Patrick oh. O. Murphy, are we shocked? Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, he's like Pat, Patrick. Oh, my God. He's like Irish. Is he like that maudlin Irish kind of tortured artist I don't know. He just oh, always like is like, I can't make a salad. Why? Because you make it better. So whatever kind of Irish that that's is. helpless he, Irish. Yeah, helpless Irish where he can't make a sandwich. <laughs> that's a lazy a Irish. Sal- yeah. yeah, it's kind of That's bad. not Irish. That's just lazy. He's kind of a sad potato. I love but potatoes. But he's my sad potato. I love potatoes. I know. I that love them in stereotype. all forms. Although, what? you want to hear something weird? Weird weird fact. Well, it's a podcast, uh, yeah. Love sweet potatoes. Reject them in fry form. I don't like them at all. They're not oh. potatoes, first of all. Don't, it's sort of like oatmeal raisin cookies. They're like chocolate chip. Like You're like, oh, chocolate chip, and you eat it, and you're like, oh, you're a liar cookie. That's how I feel. What were we just talking about? Listen, Tom sweet Peterson. Potatoes. So I don't like sweet potatoes. Listen, Tom Peterson. This Oatmeal raisin cookies are my favorite cookie. They're the worst. They're not even. Wow. No, they are. You know what they taste like? Hate and racism. So That's what they taste question, like. Question is the theme of your podcast watching friendships die Oof. in real time? Because I feel like well, that's what's happening. I right usually now. do it over text because it's so much easier to see that those three your dots pop up. Your burger from Sex in the City with the post-it note. I've this never seen it. Working out. I've never seen that in the show. I'm a girl, of course. I've seen it. My daughter was all upset. Oh, here's a spoiler. So I don't. This is gonna probably drop next week. So it'll probably be. But my daughter was. We had, she's 14, so she's awful. And we were having a fight last night, and I just wanted to hurt her. And I'm on Twitter, so I she hadn't caught up on Riverdale, and so I just lashed out, and I told her, "Do you watch Riverdale?" Yes, I do. Did you have you watched it recently? No, but I can be spoiled. But do you do you know what happened? No. I told her that that Jughead died. Are you serious? I'm serious. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. That's not real. She almost that cr- didn't happen. She almost cried. Oh yeah, my so god. Yeah, all my gay friends were just blew up on Facebook and on Twitter, and they're all upset. Yeah. I don't know what that means. First of all, that show's stupid because it is. I, but I watch it because I hate myself. Oh, my daughter, she watches it, but I don't. I know all the characters, but they're all Jughead's not. He's supposed to have a little crown with like the little. Well, he does. He wears the hat with the little. I didn't watch it. It's. It, I don't know, but yeah, she was very upset. She she was just staring at me. I wanted to hurt her, so I said, "You know what? Jughead died." And she. Did, I thought she was gonna cry. She goes, "What?" She goes, "You're lying." I said, "Nope." Just saw it on Twitter. That and reminds I out. me of when Patrick and I. Well, let's just go ahead and spoil everything for everybody. So the first time that we went to go see the Force awakens obviously han solo dies sorry everybody if you haven't seen it at this point this is your problem suppose. but uh, but we went to see that and i started crying because he's my favorite i have been in love with han solo ever since i was a small child and my dad didn't know what to do with me so he's like you're a girl watch star wars and thus my crush on han solo was born so i started crying and like <laughs> you know like really like kind of awkward sobs and patrick puts his arm around me i'm like he gets it he gets it and he leans and goes are you going to keep doing this? Because <laughs> you may want to leave. It's getting a little awkward. I'm like, wow. Yeah, well, it's, he's Irish again, and we just don't deal well with the emotional thing. Just, you know, if my wife would cry, I'd say, you know. You're, you're the type of people who talk about your 14-year-old daughter and say, I want to hurt her. I love her, technically, on paper. But uh, my, my son is 13, and that's like, it's just he smells like feet, and he's fine. He's just, that's what all boys are like, but girls are the worst. They really? Well, uh, yeah, we are. I don't. I don't know. I don't know where I'm falling on the spectrum. Yes. No, you're you're cool. I mean, you're totally fine. I have no problem with that. Thanks. All right, so let's talk about your podcast. So we're doing this because May is Maryland Podcasting Month. So, Which I didn't even know well, it was a thing. I think Red Maryland. I don't know if Red Maryland started or not, but they they're pushing it pretty hard. So if hmm. Red Maryland, go subscribe. They're obviously conservative podcasts. They they air every week. They do a good job, but they're pushing this. So I think we're appearing on Red Maryland next week or probably this week when you hear it. So mm-hmm. we got the. Uh, uh, Naptown Pike, Pinecast. Yes. And then uh, the Annapolis podcast with Scott McMullen, More Power to You with Josh Cohen. And so we're all doing this crossover thing. So I want you to tell me more 
about your podcast. First of all, let's let's break through the stereotype. You are a girl. Let's yes. stipulate that. Yes. But girl. not a girl that you want to hurt, which I'm I'm a big fan of. Jughead's dead. You're a monster. So I, if you did stereotypically, if you had a podcast on wine, I'd say that's super. But you're breaking all the stereotypes and you got a beer podcast. Well, is it because of my gender? Yeah. So what's interesting is that they're... I'm trying to think of how to approach this because I, I love that. You I call love me sexist, that. but I know. No, it's You'd not, like it's not about today. sexism at all. Mostly because if you go back in history, prior to the Industrial Revolution, before you know people figured out, oh, you can make money from beer, you know, women were the ones who were actually brewing beer. It was a domestic pursuit. Um, I think the time that really kind of crystallized in my head is um, my husband and I always go to Colonial Williamsburg. I went there a lot when I was my growing up. My daughter's there right now. It's awesome. I love that place. I got to leave here and go pick her up from her school. In Colonial Williamsburg? I don't love her that much. <laughs> yeah, she's at her middle school across the street here. I just imagine you driving back from Colonial Williamsburg just like so pissed off Jughead's dead, Jughead's dead, like all four hours all the way back. Uh, but I remember I was, I, we were there, we had gone there for our honeymoon and then we went back for like kind of another, you know, hey, we haven't killed each other in another year of being married. Hooray, let's how go celebrate. How long have you been married? Uh, eight years. Okay, so that's, so you're getting to that contempt part. We're not, yeah, we're not quite at like direct stabbing, kind of like the awkward like, oh, I accidentally elbowed you accidentally air quotes you know yeah. we're, we're getting to the kind of violence my wife and I, we've been together 25 years so if something happens to me i want an autopsy just so everyone knows i'm telling this to everybody okay so if i don't see you at the christmas party next I want, year i want an autopsy i do oh. and i want i want her doing time i want her to go to like the worst prison possible i love her though i do love her <laughs> you know what but just if she kills me you i want having, her going down if you had an autopsy and elaine from seinfeld is there and drops a junior man <laughs> Quite refreshing. <laughs> That'd be great. Yes, it, yeah. absolutely. Oh, so when I went to Colonial Williamsburg, I had the pleasure of getting to uh, shadow the actual brewer on site. Like you have the blacksmith doing the blacksmithing. They have a brewer. Racist. And oh, I, I know you don't see color, so I'm sorry. I don't. Neutral, or gender. Neutral smithing. I, I don't see color or gender. I just, Khaki smithing. I just see like torsos. Even that can be a little dangerous. So be it's careful. It's like out of Black Mirror. I just see like that shape. I haven't seen that show. It's the best. Is it? Yeah. Is it as good as Riverdale? <laughs> you know, in Black Mirror, <laughs> Jughead dies. Oh, but does he? Is it like Schrodinger's cat, where he like dies and not dies, depending on what you think? I have no idea what that is. What? No. Okay, so moving on. So I was at Colonial Williamsburg. Great guy well, you named a lot Frank. Of time there. Jesus. I do. It's wonderful. It's a delight. Mm. Oh, but um, he said, you know, if you had gone, if you had asked to meet the brewmaster. If you had come to the governor's palace in colonial times, you would have been led to the lady of the house. And that really stuck with me. I started the podcast, though, because, it, uh, honestly, out of sheer laziness. Laziness, but also I felt like I was doing... I don't feel like doing anything. Why don't I start a podcast, podcast. and edit the shit out of that? Well, no, it, it was mostly because I was going around and doing all these interviews because I started with my column for the Capitol. So I write the beer column for the Capitol Gazette, comes out every other week in the pl flavor section. And I felt like there was just this dimension... Of storytelling that was lost because I would talk to them I'd have these like amazing conversations I'd spend a couple hours there it was usually over beers like when brewers were just at their most relaxed their most comfortable and there's just so much that you lose when you're trying to tell a story that has a certain word count and like a certain number of column inches mm -hmm. and so I started doing the podcast because I just wanted people to get oh, to know I the get, people behind it. the beer. Right. You know, it, it, it was, you know, a lot of the beer writing that I read now, and, and this isn't to say all of it, but a lot of it is kind of like the same, you know, not puff pieces, but everybody's the running the same pieces. Like if a new beer is coming out, a new brewery is coming out. Oh God, is the sky is falling? Is there a craft beer bubble? And I just wanted something where you started to get to know the people behind the beer. So like we were talking about earlier, I'm originally from DC and DC actually has a, a thriving beer scene, but it wasn't until I came to Maryland that I fell in love with beer. Oldest brewery in the country too. Yeah. Or it was the oldest. I have a bottle of beer from, they closed down in the eighties, but I, I still have a bottle of beer from it. No kidding. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Huh. The more you know. Dun, dun, dun. Exactly. 
but it wasn't until I moved to Maryland that I really fell in love with beer. And at first, I remember moving here and being like, "Okay, guys, I get it. You love your flag. It's on everything. Yeah, we got it." Um, please. Yeah, but you moved from D.C., so I mean, it's not like you're coming into an alien land. D.C. and Maryland are the same thing. You do understand, though, that growing up in D.C. and then later nor- in Northern Virginia, like if I just breathed, oh, Northern Virginia. no, oh, if I breathed gross. that I had been to Maryland, I was automatically grounded. They're the worst there because no one's from Northern Virginia. They're all transient, and there's nothing there when I was a kid. It was just fields, big stupid fields. Have you seen the Eastern Shore? Well, those are lovely fields. They are beautiful, but they're different fields. Yeah, because they're not filled with stupid Northern Virginians. We don't have any listeners from there, so I don't care. You know, it, here's the thing I, I, I struggle with you, Tim, and, and I I want to get this on the record. Would you stay focused? Good God, you keep going off track. No, but I feel this is important. I feel like I never know what you think about anything. Mm. You know, you're very ambivalent. You're very uh, shy, like a wilting lilac with your opinions. This beer is, is very high in alcohol content. No. Yes. So like when you swirl it, you see the body where it comes to the... Yeah, but don't don't let color and have to fool you. There are plenty of beers that are lighter in color and a little bit maybe more effervescent and crisp on the tongue that are way higher octane than well, that. Well, beers are... Like, all right, here's why I like Merle Light. It's because, first of all, because I have a drinking problem. And second is because <laughs> it is uh, there's it's it's a clean it's water you know it's i mean essentially you know i just kind of get mm-hmm. used to it. where i couldn't drink coors light i couldn't drink anything else if i drink like a stella i appreciate it but i can't drink a whole lot of it because mm-hmm. you know it fills you up and and what have you but sometimes i'll have like i don't i've never gotten the craft beers because the aftertaste was way too much for me i know they're supposed to have an aftertaste i i would disagree with that mostly because the style that you're drinking with miller light that's something that is easily accessible in the craft world a pilsner yeah I like so if, yeah. I, if i go to a craft if i go anywhere and i say can i have uh like where, where do i go oh yeah so if i go to like 909 mm-hmm. as they bring me a pilsner, pilsner and they'll bring me a pilsner and it's got that that kind of hoppy taste to it but not it's not too much. It's still got kind of a clean taste that I kind of like. Mm-hmm. I do like the Guinness, but I, you talk about the craft beer bubble. In the mm-hmm. '90s, we lived uh, with Albuquerque, and mm-hmm. that was in the West. The and then it moved eastward because oh, yeah. Rock Bottom and Bethesda in the '90s too. Mm-hmm. But there was the craft breweries or the you know the, what do you call it the beer craft beer bars were everywhere, and there was a bubble. But it got to the point where they bring out the samplers. They're like, hey, try this raspberry. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't want fruitiness. I don't. It got too fancy for me. I'm well, not that sophisticated when it comes to beer. The funny thing is that a lot of those styles, like where people consider them very fancy, they typically tend to be Belgian, um, and they're like a, a, a framboise or any of those types of styles or, or fruited sours. Um, without getting too wonky for your podcast, a lot of times like- those are just made with local farm ingredients, and that's how they actually started becoming much more normalized. You know, farmers were just throwing in what they had and creating like kind of a working beer when they were out in the field something fortifying something delicious something cold and it would be with whatever they had on hand how far of, like, I think about this too because I'm really into food and yeah. to me like the foods that we have now even because I'm, I'm into gardening too even like the fruits and vegetables like tomatoes weren't even red until about 150 years ago mm-hmm. we've made such huge changes I always wonder because they talk about the Egyptians were brewing beer oh you know, yeah like, but I wonder what the beer was like 300 years ago compared to today. Are we that far afield from it? Well, that's what's actually kind of funny about it. So I, I some, so I actually started with wine and spirits before I kind of fell faced first, you know, broke into beer. Um, it, I have fallen face first into beer before. We all do it. It happens at the ebb tide a lot. Let's just not I talk. I know me too. Um, Davis's quite a bit, but usually in a quiet corner with a crab pretzel, just, you know, kind of. With people looking at you and judging you because you come into their clicky bar. Yes, but it's like half a mile from where we live. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to have a crab pretzel. It's going to be a good time. Um, Don't sit in Jeff's chair or whoever's chair. It's really there's a chair? Uh, there probably is. Probably. I don't know. What was the question? You guys start paying attention. Oh, so how far... Oh, yeah. Like, the beers. So, like, uh, for example, like, when we go to Old Stein Inn, because my wife's German. Oh, yeah. And the food's actually... You know, it's pricey, but you go there. If I have one of those beers... I am looped. It's and I'm a drinker, you know, because it's like seven, eight, nine percent. Well, I'm alcohol. very curious about what you're drinking there because they also have a lot of really great box and it's lagers good. and pilsners yeah, yeah, that are not that high in alcohol. Well, one that I have. Is. Oh, but yeah. So how far are we from what we're producing today versus what we were producing yeah. back then? Um, I would say leaps and bounds ahead of that, and part of that has to do with innovation, and part of that has to do with the fact that. Um, 
you know when you hear wine stories like where did this come from there's like this long sprawling history with like families and generations and this grape went there and this grape uh, with beer history it's a little bit more fuzzy for example the porter um, nobody is actually sure where the porter came from like one brew pub old school brew pub in England said you know hey we brewed it for the porters and then this other brew pub said no we did it nobody's actually sure where it came from because you know what happens when you drink with a bunch of people you drink a bunch of beer and you sit at the bar everybody's telling that story about that guy and how he punched them in the face and they did this and they did that and nobody's actually quite Uh, sure if that's actually what happened so there's like a lot of bar history there Um, that's not true for all of it but you know when you when you start looking at some of the different types of styles that have evolved over the years and the centuries quite frankly a lot of it just comes down to the fact that it wasn't documented so a lot of Belgian styles like saisons and farmhouses all they really know is that they brewed a beer, put it in a barrel, set it outside, some wild yeast showed up, it got a little funky, it got a little zippy, and thus we had a Saison. But you don't actually, we don't actually know what those styles tasted like because nobody ever wrote it down. We just know basically what they were trying to do. I read an article about, uh, this is a long time ago, it was the world's, what's considered by aficionados to be the world's best beer. Which beer? It's called Budweiser. In, no, no, uh, it, mm-hmm. in the Czech Republic. It's mm-hmm. this small brewery, and it was Budweiser, and Budweiser <laughs> wanted to buy the name, but apparently they've been around since like the, the 11th century, mm-hmm. something like that. It was, you know, monks at first and everything, and but they said, you know, Budweiser spills more beer per year in one of their breweries than they brew or something like that. That's not surprising. But it's considered to be the world's finest beer. It was at least 10 years, 10, 12 years ago when I read about it. But I think about like the, you know, those areas like in, you know, what's Bohemia and um, Bavaria. And, and mm-hmm. that to me, just stereotypically, I think of that as being kind of the beer belt, you know, Central Central Europe. Yeah, it, it's interesting though. Like think about it when, again, using wine as, as an example, you know, you think of French wine, but Italian wine also comes into play when you start thinking about old world wines and you and you see that also in Europe when it comes to beer. You have the Bavarian area, but you also have the Belgians. But they seem limited Belgians. with wine because they have to have the Mediterranean climate to, draw, to grow the grapes, whereas mm-hmm. I don't think you have those limitations with beer, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, when you, when you think about what we're seeing in Maryland right now and, and locally also just on the East Coast, we've, we've been struggling a lot to grow it as a viable product, hops, which is one of the staple ingredients in every single beer you drink. It's why I also think it's kind of funny. Like, I don't like hoppy beer, but I like Miller Lite. It's like, I regret to inform you. <laughs> that sounded you. just like me, by the way. I, like, the voice, I was like, oh my god, that's me. I know. It's, I was like, listening to myself. That's like the best Tim Hi, Tim. I'm Tim. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's so funny, because people say that. I'm like, I regret to inform you that every beer you drink has hops in it. Every single one. There's a, uh, I, I had to go to a seminar the other day, and they were talking about pests that are coming into the East Coast. It was a fascinating, it actually was a fascinating. Was it just a picture of your face on the PowerPoint? And then, but there's something coming up from um, Pennsylvania. I, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it's this, this insect that's like awful, and it's like around the Philadelphia area, and it's devastating, like uh, trees and everything. You know, I just want to say, is it, a, is it a John Frenet swarm? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? He's the worst. I know. But is it they're, they're one of the things? It's attacking hops and grapes. Isn't yep. Crazy. Um, but so it's limited to like southeastern Pennsylvania right now. But everyone on the East Coast is terrified of this thing. Just we're talking about hops. No, that that's a really good point because what what was interesting is that uh, I would say I think it was before the Great Depression. The East Coast, particularly around upstate New York, that used to be the hop production area of the United States, and then it got completely wiped out. Uh, and oh, you're now, blessed? by drought, by Great Depression, by a number of other things, there were a lot of different factors that basically resulted in upstate New York being completely wiped out. And now all of that is on the West Coast. Fun fact. So here's the beer that I really like that, you know, so I'm limited to Budweiser, or uh, I'll drink Bud, but I mean, my go-to is Miller Lite, because I have no class. But it's Stella Artois, I like it. Uh, Amstel Light it is pretty good. But I really, when I was in my 20s, I really got into Sapporo. Hmm. Good Japanese beer. It was just, that to me was just a like nice, clean... You should try Skipjack Pilsner from Union. <laughs> really clean, light, crisp Pilsner. What beers don't you like? Mmm... Hefeweizens, I respect them. I understand them. What they, is it? uh, it's a it's a unfiltered wheat beer. It smells like banana and clove. 
Uh, it's what a hoe garden is if you're talking about a mass mar- mask market beer. Oh, I'm just getting so lost. Yeah. Well, you've never heard of hoe garden? Mm-mm. Hoe garden is like the Miller Lite of of uh, Hefeweizens. It's a wheat beer. Wow. Oh. That's all it is. I respect it from a distance in someone else's glass. I don't know what it is. I just, I'm never going to be the girl that picks up a Hefeweizen and goes, yeah, that's what I want. I can't drink, I mean, now I sound like a, like a big girl. I can't drink a lot of, like, so, like what we're having right now. You're doing a great job. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good. It's, it's really, I mean, a lot of alcohol, but, um, which, you know, I like alcohol, I'm not going to lie, but it's just, I couldn't be able to mix a lot of these, I don't think. Mm. Well, you're not supposed to. I think what's interesting about how light loggers have trained people to pound beers, to chug beers, to expect them to be as ice cold as possible. And that's the opposite of what you do with craft beer, which is how beers were traditionally made. You know, think about it like... I've always been surprised when people say, oh, I don't like a stout. Did you have it ice cold? Yes. Well, what happens when you put an ice cube on your tongue? You can't taste anything. Well, it numbs out ice. your taste buds. So if you're having an ice cold beer that is supposed to be have dimension and depth and lots of flavor, you're going to miss half of it because it's ice cold. Well, we had when we go to Ireland every couple of years. We've been doing that since the 70s. And when we go over, we, uh, we, you know, we swim in the Guinness. And when we were kids, we'd go over. It was always, you know, the room temperature or close to it or whatever it was but now I think they, they're kind of Americanized in so much as it's, it's cold now when mm. you get it I like it would you let me order a beer for you let's do it okay All I right. don't know where Gordon is should I go find him let's find, yeah we'll find Gordon Hold I'm on. gonna go find Gordon call Gordon the magic of editing he's gonna bring out the beer here in a little bit alright so you ordered us a Czech beer so I I have one quarter Czech Really? I'm three quarters Irish and a quarter Czech. I am Scotch Italian, so I'm just angry all the time. Scotch Italian. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to come up with some stereotype, but I, so you're cheap and angry. No, ah, shit. I'm trying to mix up all my all of my stereotypes. I'm gonna let you hang in this awkward silence, That's, Tim. It's never awkward. You did this. But I, I can edit this. You did this. To I us. can edit this. Matter of fact, I'm not gonna edit it just to show the awkwardness at this moment. So uh, quarter Czech. Quarter Czech. Uh, I've always wanted to go to Prague, though. And I heard the Czech beer, we just talked about it, but I heard Czech beer, like Central European beer, is the best. That's Bohemia, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's Bohemian region. Prague is the most beautiful city in Europe because it's untouched by World War II. I've never been. I've always wanted to go. My brother went. He said it's amazing. So what's, what is the distinguishing characteristic of this beer? That beer? No, not the no. The beer we're talking about 10 seconds ago. Let's stay focused. Oh, the beer that hasn't yeah. come yet? Yeah. Um, so it's a Czech Pilsner. Uh, what I'm really excited about with this particular beer is that it comes from a brewery up in Baltimore called Peabody Heights, and it's built on the site of Old Oriole Park. So it's, it's up like at North 30th Street, and it is a clean, classic Czech Pilsner. Very light. It's comes in a tall boy you can actually get them in tall boys at most stores and it's, it's perfect it's baseball beer <laughs> it really well i mean it's it, that's what it's for for playing baseball well i mean i hope not playing baseball, but is it but an watching. american thing is it like is it a real czech beer or is it like like american so, chinese food like no, chinese no, no, food no, no, you no, get no, is no. not even so chinese. czech pilsner is is as a style because pilsen was a small town where the pilsner was born although it's actually very funny oh i oh. think here it comes is this the czech pilsner is this is the oral mark yep so, that's oh, you thank you gordon it was just informed that the other one believe it or not were out of <gasps> mambo so sauce kicked to see if it would sell. no that's fine all right so let me see what i can do all here right, so gordon brought us one beer and that's for you here okay, try that and tell me you don't hate it okay let's see do your best be strong Oh, okay. Now that I, li- I like that. Thank you. Yeah, so it's got a little sweet undertone to it. I'll get the Abel Hands from Peabody Heights also. Thank you. All right. Let's see. So I still have to taste the other one in my mouth. That one kind of lingers. Hold on. We should cleanse the palate with like a, you know, pizza. <laughs> you know what my favorite palate cleanser is? Lo mein. I'm off Chinese food, though. What? Yeah, it's too clumsy. It's first. It's just every, it's so heavy and just, just, just. Whenever I stupid. Eat, that's fair because I like whenever I eat Chinese food, I'm I eat it and then a half an hour later I'm just like I hate myself. I hate uh, everything about myself. I love like Thai food I could eat like it's my job. That I love, you know, but Chinese food no. But it's not your job, Tim. It's not. Well not yet. Hold on, hold on, sorry, hold on. What's up? Buttery? Is it buttery? It's buttery with woody undertones. Yeah. Yeah. Actually uh, it's very horse blanket? <laughs> compared to what we just had, what was the other one we had? Siren Noir from Heavy Seas. Siren Noir. It was, was very heavy, but I mean, not unpleasantly so. This is a, the polar opposite. It's extremely light. Mm-hmm. 
it's it looks like Miller Lite, a little bit darker, kind of like that. Check, huh? It is a baseball beer. I don't even like baseball. Yeah. What's called a basketball? Well, I mean, it's the old Oriel Park beer. And what's also nice is good, that yeah. this is award winning. It won the uh, Comptroller's Cup a few years ago for Best Maryland Craft Beer. Why does the Comptroller do that? Peter? Mm-hmm. We've had him on the podcast. Go back and listen to the Peter Franchot podcast of the Maryland Crabs. Okay. So what are, what are we waiting on for yours? I am also getting something from Peabody Heights. It's called Able Hands. It's a pale ale. All right. So break it down for me. because uh, Breaking it down. Explain like I'm five. But so all the beers. All right. So actually this for, for a 48 year old man, I really and who loves uh-huh. more light. I've never thought much about the categories of beer. Yeah. I know stout. Mm hmm. I know Pilsner just because it's on the side of Miller Lite. Mm -hmm. So break them all down. So fun fact, there are actually only two types of beers in the whole world. Mm -hmm. There are ales and there are lagers. That is a lager. A stout is an ale. And it comes down to the type of yeast that's used. Super simple. There's different yeasts? Different yeast. I'm into sourdough bread. That's my hobby. I make sourdough. Mm -hmm. I have a sourdough starter. And we get the yeast from... No way. I do. I, I, I have sourdough starter. And I have to feed it every night, like it's a pet. I don't want to brag, but I'm pretty awesome. So is it kind of like a like a little shop of horror situation? Uh, it's like, feed me, Timothy. So it's, well, it's this big jar, and in it, it's, you know, just water and flour. That's all it is. And so you have to feed it, and then it surges throughout the day, and then, then it'll, it'll you know, sink, and then, sur- you know, so when you want to make bread, you have to feed it, and then a certain amount of hours later, you mix that into your dough, and huh. that's how you make sourdough. But it takes yeast from the air, so I didn't know there was more than one yeast. Oh, yeah. Well, what was funny is when they were first making beer a long, long time ago, and I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about Belgian farmers sending out you know, barrels in their farmhouses, and then beer magically happened. Um, so there's something actually called the German Beer Purity Law. It's called Reinheitsgebot. Sounds German. Yeah, I know. My wife's German. It sounds like her. Yeah, exactly. But they always sound very snooty about it with their yeah, yeah, sharp ties. Yeah. Um, but what was funny is that for a very, very long time, so there are four ingredients in beer, and that's yeast, water, hops, grains. But and love. No. Oh, oh, German. That's right. Can we not make it weird? We're beyond that. <laughs> like, I'm feeling Put really uncomfortable. I'm feeling very uncomfortable. Hashtag me too. Yeah. Where is my Mira Sorvino? I know, I love her so Anyway, okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Bad news. Oh. Really? What, what giving, is happening Gordon's to giving us the next right, flash. So has oh, any... I mean, you're a very nice gentleman, Gordon, Gordon. so I'm not going to do that. Did anything get in, put on in its plates? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Gordon, we know we can make this happen. We can make this work. All right. All right. So let's go... Let's go Brewer's Art Green Peppercorn Triple. I know we have that. Yes! What the hell did you just say? Nothing. None of your business. You and Gordon are just making shit up. Yes. So for a long time, they did not know that yeast was something critical to beer. They would put their barrels out and wild yeast would accumulate and beer would go poof, you know, beer magically appears. Isn't it crazy that like, there's yeast everywhere? Like we're yeah. probably covered in yeast right now. Do you, do, you need a, do you need a cream? It's gross. Now I'm disgusted. It's good beer though. It is good. See? So, See? so ale and pils- lager. Lager. Yeah. So what's Pilsner? Pilsner's a type of lager. So, all right. So if we're doing, it's sort of like the class the taxonomy. 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 So you have uh, ale and lager. Mm-hmm. And then under ale you have? Stouts, brown ales, porters, IPAs. I mean, of course it's IPA and pale ale because ale is in the, India pale ale. Okay. So under lager you have? Pilsner's, box, doppelbox. Loggers, Schwartz beers. This is a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to yeah. be. This, I think I'm just going to stick my middle light. Yeah, you will. Mm. Or, well, uh, you say that as you drink an old Oriole Park. Yeah, here we go. All right, so here we go. Gordon just brought <gasps> Yay! you. Yay! I love this beer. This is a green peppercorn it. triple. Okay. Don't tell Patrick. Mm. Wait, tell Patrick. I don't care. He, he deserves to know. He's the worst. Patrick's the worst. Mm. This is so good. That's got a nice head on it. You want to try a taste? I do. Let me get your cooties. Yep. Yeah, I don't think I could drink. That's very complex. It's, you mean sweet? No, I mean complex. Like, there's a lot of different things going on yeah. at the same time. It's a green peppercorn triple. So you this. remember when I said to you earlier, don't let color and heft sway your opinion? I just, I was drifting off. I know, I'm a woman. Well, 
you know, as Patrick says, it's my small woman brain. It restricts blood flow. I don't understand math and science. He is a sexist. You should leave him. For it's, who? The beer? <laughs> well, it's a very complex beer, beer, so yeah. I mean, he won't let me go. He can't make sandwiches. We discussed this. Or salads. No. Um, he cannot make salads. Irish guy would so, eat salad. Remember when I was Irish saying... I know. Well, I kind of turned him on that. I get like real, I'm really intense about salads. Mm. You know how they say people don't actually like salads? I love salads. There is no restaurant in Annapolis where I haven't had their Caesar salad. Fact. I like Caesar salad. I'm intensely in love with Caesar salads. A best salad in town. Oh, uh, Big 909. I'm going to go back to that one. They have like an arugula salad uh, that's with like goat cheese and stuff. It's ridiculous. I love Vin 909. Uh, I also they love awesome. if you go to Vin 909, if you look at their sign, you know what they also advertise on there other than wine and pizza? Craft beer. Yeah. When I go there, I'm all magnanimous. So she'll say, what kind of beer would you like? I say, I look at her and I said, you know what? Surprise me, and she goes. Oh, oh, you're that guy. I am because I don't. Ugh. No, I am because I'm not going to admit that I don't know. Like if she goes, well, what do you like? I'd be like, you know, alcohol. I will have two alcohols, please. So I don't. <laughs> what type of beer would you like? Yes. Yeah. So I, I do that thing where I like barely make eye contact because you know, I'm I'm you know, I'm just going to be like peeling off hundreds later in the in the night because I'm that kind of guy. I'm just like, just That's why you go to award ceremonies in Spain. So I just say, just surprise me. And, she, and when it comes, I drink. I, I look at her and I go, good choice. Very good choice. And I, even if you it's like, no I have idea no idea. What you're, oh, my God. That reminds me of a story of when I was trying to impress a guy. Terrible idea. I'm not good no, at that. No. Learned that. But I was in my early 20s. I was living in Boston. And I had taken French for like two years. So, of course, oh, I was geez. a master. And so he was like really into beer. And we went out with him and his friend. He was a little bit older, so I was trying to impress him. He's 50. 70, actually. Let's be a little right. less judgmental, please. I'm an ageist. But you don't see color. No, I don't. I do see age. That's why you only yeah. go to see khaki smiths at Williamsburg. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> oh, my God. Um... So you, you were uh, trying to impress someone, and I'm hoping this sounds badly. Like, so we, oh, it does. It ends, well, actually, no, it ends well, but I sound like a jackass in the process, so yeah, we'll that, all win. That, yeah. So it'll be great. So I was like maybe 21, 22, and we were going to this place with his guy friend. It was called The Other Side Cafe, and they had all of these beers, and I had no idea what to order, and I saw this beer that was called Unibrew La Fin de Monde, and I had, with my limited French... I was like, I'll have a La Fin de Monde, please. And then I flipped my hair and leaned over and went, you know that means the end of the world in French. And I'm, I just cringed. I know, it was terrible. All, I, I, cr- I, I have like second, third, and fourth oh. hand embarrassment. It was terrible. I I'm was scrunching my toes up right I now. I know, it was so bad. And that's why we got married. Just kidding, we didn't. Um, <laughs> that's why he got a restraining order. But then I sat there and went, I just ordered a beer called The End of the World. What am I... What did I order? <laughs> and I started freaking out internally. But, of course, outside, I'm, like, giggling. Like, ah, I'm so excited. I love girl. beer. And I, at that point, I was only drinking, like, Malibu and Diet Coke and Miller High Life. Like, that was the extent. Malibu and Diet Coke. Wow. Let's not be so judgmental. Um, sort of a mirror light. So tell me about your podcast. So you have a bunch of episodes under your belt. Uh, a bunch by, by that you mean, like, 10, 13 That's or so. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It was pretty good. I'm not, yeah, I'm it's not pretty condescending here. I mean, we, we have a couple hundred, but that's good too. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Good for you on being mediocre. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I am adequate. My adequacity is something I take pride in. Is that what your German wife would say? No, she would say, why is the lawn not mowed? Well, well, why isn't the lawn? So how many, what kind of guests have you had so far? I mean, I know the answer to this, but I'm trying to be conversational. Uh, a mix. So obviously brewers, but I, one of the things I've been trying to do differently. <laughs> Zookeepers. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Lots of orangutans. <laughs> uh, they have lots of opinions also about yeah. pilsners. No, I you know orangutans cannot throw overhand. What? Nope. They can't throw a ram. A bunch of John McCain's. No, but if they have a rock... Oh, good call. Yeah. But if they have a rock... Dude, this is going to suck if he dies this week, and then I'm going to have to edit this out. I made it weird. Yeah, you did. But an orangutan, if it has a rock, it's going to drop it on you, probably, because it can't throw overhand. <laughs> so who's on your podcast? <laughs> Um, well, I'm actually very excited. So the one I just did, 
a couple weeks ago. It should be coming out tomorrow, which is going to be in the past when this right. actually airs. So get in your way back machine and go listen to. Yeah, get in your little tugboat. So I recently had two women on my podcast. Good for you. That's forward thinking. I know. Good for us. Girls are great. With our lady parts and things <laughs> and our, our thinking hats and our, our wages. Okay, tell me more about it, Equal. You better be careful. Next, I'm going to want the vote. Uh, no. <laughs> You might have the vapors right now. You can take a relax on the I'm a little couch. verklempt. Um, no, I've had a lot of different people on my podcast, but the, the one that's coming out is Cindy Mulliken, who is the owner of Mully's in Prince Frederick, but she's also recently voted as the Brewers Association of Maryland president. And then I also had with her Maureen O'Prey, who is a historian who recently wrote the book Beer in Maryland. Hmm. Um, and What's that about? Uh, so surprisingly, whiskey in Illinois. It was kind of a shocker, kind of like Take a sixth the sense situation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you see red, they're talking about whiskey. Exactly. You know? It was very. It no was, one's going to get that. It was shock. I'm like, I turn the page. I'm like, I'm reading about Baltimore. I'm reading about Bruce Willis. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> but I, what I try to do is instead of it just being kind of like those generic, hey, we're having somebody on, we're doing a generic interview about you. I try to bring it on in some sort of context. So. This Monday, actually, I'm going to be interviewing Captain Jen from the Schooner Woodwind, oh, along yeah. with the team from Hysteria. She was on with John. Yeah, but she and I and the team from Hysteria, which is out in Columbia, are going to be recording together because Hysteria is doing the anniversary beer for Schooner Woodwind. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, so it's uh, I can't. I, of course, I can't remember the name of the beer right now because I'm a terrible human being and I'm well, 18 yeah. beers deep. Yeah. Um, but I, it's really just about finding awesome stories. My first episode that I ever did that was just really exciting to me was when I went out to Salisbury, Maryland, and I met with John Knorr, who is one of the brothers that founded Evolution Brewing Company out in Salisbury, and Mayor Jake Day. And the whole story, which could have easily just been, you know, hey, tell me about your brewery and what beers do you make, became this whole story about how breweries really impact communities. Because Salisbury has gone undergone an interesting transformation, and evolution has been a critical part of that story, where their median age is now down to 24. People used to go to Salisbury University and then try to leave, and now people want to stay. My school, speaking of that, uh, I went to St. Francis University, it was St. Francis College. It's up in western Pennsylvania. They have a fermentation course now mm-hmm. for beer and wine. That's really, really cool. And, speaking of me, my father-in-law, who just passed away, oh. yeah, George. He, to George. To George. He was a good guy. I love George. Uh-oh. George was a brewer at Rheingold Brewery. No in, kidding. Yeah, in Brooklyn. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. My, my wife's from Brooklyn, and her dad was a, was a brewer over at Rheingold Brewery. And then they shut the brewery down in the mid-70s, hmm. which is why they had to move to Western PA. Well, another fun fact. He was buried last week, not to bring us down, but with his Rheingold hat. Wow. Yeah, cool, right? That is really stinking cool. Yeah. So, fun fact, so your wife is from Brooklyn, you said? Uh Uh-huh. Brooklyn Brewery, which is now obviously like the Brooklyn Brewery, the famous, um, they used to be what's called a contract brewer, which means they would give recipes to other breweries and have them brew the beer for them because they didn't have the capital to have their own brewery. Oh, so it was like a franchise thing. No, not really. So it's... it's, Okay, make me look stupid. Go. No, no, keep going. You're so dumb. (laughs) Everything's so fun. stupid. You're so dumb with your thoughts. Find me something thoughts. pretty. Um, no, but it was funny. So they were contract brewing until they bought a matzah factory oh, in matzah. Brooklyn. And then they became the Brooklyn Brewery. Everybody knows. I today. love matzah. I'm not going to lie. My grandfather turned me on to that. Can I get like super local for a second? Sure. Uh, the matzah ball soup at Double T can get it. Really? Yeah. It's super basic. I'll be honest. I've still had better. But when I've had a day or an evening or an afternoon or maybe a week or a month and I just need to go and commune with food, I will commune with the matzo soup there. I like matzo soup. I grew up in Bethesda and I didn't know any Jewish people. I grew up in an Irish neighborhood. I know. I went to my first, How? I went to my first bar mitzvah. And I didn't even go to the bar mitzvah. I just went to the reception. Jared Lippman. Huh. Uh, bat mitzvah. Sorry, his daughter. And uh, it was awesome. But uh, he goes, how have you never gone? This is my first temple. And he goes, how have you never gone to, you grew up in Bethesda. I'm like, yeah, we're a very insulated culture. 
I dated a Jewish guy when I was in college. I was Catholic. He was Jewish. We were destined. Decent cousins, yeah. You know, destined for greatness. That's why we're married now. Just kidding. No. <laughs> uh, but I, I went to a, a Purim, and I had to wear, like, a doily on my head, and I did the little sound thing. That's around St. Patrick's, though. What? That's around St. Patrick's. It's March. Moorhead. What is Moorhead? Scottish. Oh, that's right. Well, it's like Irish. Don't look so disappointed, Tim. Uh, it's, it's like, it's, Scottish is to Irish as Miller Lite is to beer. Wow. Flawless segue. What? Flawless. So, uh, so how often do you put out your podcast? Periodically. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to do the... We're going to get you on a schedule. I John, know. John has us on a schedule. I'm not going to lie. John is a taskmaster. Well, part of the reason is because I'm on a schedule with my capital column. And I, I wow. really, that is, I have a fierce love for my capital column. It was what got me started. Um, the, do you want to hear the funny story about how I became the capital columnist for beer? Well, yeah. That's okay. All plenty of podcasts. So um, I had started Naptown Pint before it became Naptown Pint was, by the way, called OMG Hey Liz. Uh, that is a true story. True story. Because I wasn't really, I wasn't like set on beer yet. And then it became Naptown Pint drunkenly at Victoria's Gastropub in Columbia. I claimed the name on Twitter. I bought the website. What was it again? OMG Hey Liz. <laughs> You're the worst. I know. That's awful. Isn't it terrible? And it was a Tumblr blog. It was like. Tumblr. I remember Tumblr. <laughs> I thought it was still there. I know. Those people are weird. I did it. Well, I did it because it had. Uh, this is totally nerdy, but it had auto formatting for like galleries and yeah. photos and stuff like that. But I had just started kind of just writing for myself because I learned by writing, and I also didn't have. Any I learned f- by flashcards. I I didn't have any friends because I had just moved here, um, so I just wrote to wah, my friends on wah. the internet. I just feel very sorry for you. There were friends waiting for me. They were <laughs> like you, Timothy. There were friends that you have not yet met. We're friends, right? Well, I don't. We'll see how right? this ends up. <laughs> Everything's fine. This beer's so good. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. So then it was. It, then the Capitol put out a call for a beer columnist. And I had a couple people, including Donna Epstein Cole, I believe, who said you should. Oh, Donna Cole's great. Yeah, sh- you should. Uh, you should look at this. And so <laughs> I sent an email and it was an late electronic a, mail, an electronic mail message. And I said, Hey, I have to run into a meeting. Here's my resume. I don't know what to tell you about why I think I would be the best. You know, I don't know a ton about beer, but I am a trained writer. I'm also a trained editor. And I would like to think I'm not an a-hole. You know, I, I want to use it as an educational vehicle, you know. Asshole. But, yeah, asshole. Hey, come on. Hey, that's our word. We can use that. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. So <laughs> I am um, a big fan of puns. Uh, no. No, so, no, no, no. Yeah. No. So back when Steve Gunn was the editor, he wrote me a quick email and said, hey, would love to chat. Come on in. I'm starting to cringe. On Halloween. Okay. Uh, have you ever worked in offices where they're super into Halloween to the point where it's a little aggressive? Like if you don't dress up, you're going to kind of get ostracized. Okay. I worked in one of those places and I am not a big fan of getting dressed up. I am a Halloween week baby. October 26th is my birthday, so I had... My sister Katie's October 31st, it's, but go on. It's the worst, because you have costume birthdays for your entire life. <laughs> and so, fine. I'm like, fine. I'll do. I'll be B. Arthur. So I dressed up <laughs> like a bumblebee and wrote Arthur on my face. Uh, okay. I don't like puns. I will give you that one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I get there, and before I, I said, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to show up in a freaking bumblebee costume. Like that would be ridiculous. So I was like, oh, I'm wearing all black. It'll be fine. So I'm getting ready for work, and like, oh, you know, I have a mirror here. I should go ahead and write the Arthur so I get it in the correct direction. Mm-hmm. So I pull up to the old Capitol space off of uh, West Street. Mm-hmm before they moved to Bestgate. And I'm about to get out of the car and I'm looking at myself in the mirror and realized, oh my God, I have, I have Arthur written on my face. Of course you do. And I, I tried to start wiping it off, but it wasn't like in black face paint, so it just started smearing. I'm like, so you look racist. Some, exactly. Right. Yeah, 
and I uh, said, I don't want to be a racist. Being well, a racist not for is an a, interview, no. Well, it's a great way not to become a beer writer, right? right? That's like beer writing one beer, Yeah, they will not hire racists. It's the racists. first point on Do the PowerPoint. Don't, be, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. Right. be racist. And so I said, all right. I'm just going to commit. So I like grab so the Bumblebee costume. Oh, okay. I you went a different way. Okay. And I show up and I walk into the Capitol office. And I said, hi, I have a meeting with Steve Gunn. <sighs> and the woman looked at me and went, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I had it for 1030. <sighs> and she said, okay, just go ahead and wait. And I went to sit down and like the way she's like, no, no, no. Over there. So she made me go to this, like, penalty box. I bet you her name was Dottie. I have no idea. It was Dottie. She I'll was bet. very judgmental. Yeah, that's Dot- all Dotties are judgmental. Except for Dottie in uh, League of Their Own. Oh, no, she's good. Dottie's good. Fantastic. Yeah, okay. So I sit there, and I wait. And she's obviously call- obviously calling people. And I could see the moment when she was almost disappointed that she couldn't, like, call security and throw me out. <laughs> yeah. So Steve Gunn comes out and says... So you're a butterfly named Arthur? He said, you know what? I'm like, I don't want to work here after all. B. Ar- Arthur? He said, huh. I'm like, okay, great. So we're off to a great I'll start. I'll see myself out. Just going just gonna to go. So it was, it was an interesting interview. He would ask me three questions at once. I'd get about halfway through the first question. Uh, and then he'd start asking me a new set. And he's like, oh, you're an AP trained style or AP style trained editor? Yes. Oh, here, start editing this while we're talking so okay. I'm editing paper in a bumblebee costume on a chair and I, I left I picture like this little headband with like little bumblebee oh it totally was except I went forth. super cute though so they were little daisies on the top I don't match it was terrible I was over 30 why did I do that to myself and then Patrick called me he said how to go how to go and I said um I showed up in a bumblebee costume he thought it was a butterfly named Arthur and he said oh you went puns didn't you and I said I couldn't uh, and but a couple days later gotcha. I got it and now you have a podcast I know I've made it to the big time I've moved on up so they'll subscribe to Naptown Podcast or Nap- Naptown Naptown Pinecast yes Naptown Pinecast this beer's so good I told you see now you're on you're on uh, Apple Podcast right I'm on Apple Podcast Stitcher Google Play everywhere so you want to subscribe and you want to give 90 stars you want to do the reviews because it helps I know that out. it will say you can only give 5 I am commanding you as your Pinecast queen 90 90 you have to because it really helps with the algorithm. So I want you to go ahead and subscribe. And then the weekly, bi-weekly column, right? Yep. And the Capital Gazette, Bowie Blade, Crofton, West County, whatever, every other week. And where can they reach you? Uh, pretty much everywhere on the internet, at Naptown Pint. Instagram, Twitter. You and I hang out on Twitter a lot. Yeah, well, I am very political on Twitter because that's the only place I can be political because John won't let me. Me too. And I enjoy it. As a matter of fact, i got to kind of pull back a little bit because I am... No, it gives me life during the night. I, well, you will see my drinking schedule as it gets more animated as it goes on. So about around 1 a.m., I'm in a full rage. And oh, yeah? the next day, I have to start deleting. Yeah. Oh. Well, well, you have introduced me to some fine beers tonight. At least one fine beer. Well, two. They're, they're, I'm going to still stick with the Miller Lite because I'm a creature of habit. That's okay. And we have gone severely over time. Have we really? I and didn't know how long this was supposed no, to be. What? And it's going to drive John crazy. But Good. You know he's not the boss of me. Sorry, John. You weren't here. I am not sorry. And I had a lot of fun. Well, you are a delight. You are. You're fine. You know what? Cheers. Cheers, buddy. I love you, Liz Murphy. I love you, too. What, Tom? I want to sing Tom. I hate you. I hate you so much. Jughead's dead. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home.